There's a constant demand by the electronics industry to make ever more elaborate but also smaller electronic devices on the nanometer scale or below. And chemistry can play a really important role in how we can actually design and map out circuitry down at the nanometer scale. And so this opens up the possibilities that we could get electronic circuitry that's never been accessible before, which means we might get really cool devices that we've never been able to have before. I came here in 2008 from Cardiff to the University of Manchester. I brought a technology with me that allows the extension of Moore's Law. in 2010 when Scott and I met at a conference here in Southern California. I was interested in pushing the limits of what we could do with electron beam lithography here at Caltech and the new resist technology that Scott was presenting was just what I was looking for. And here at Caltech we're able to do that in the shadow of Gordon Moore's lab itself. And this project really has benefited both universities. So here at Manchester we have developed some processes and the materials that allow us to continually make these devices ever smaller and the way that we've been doing this is through a process called electron beam lithography. A key component of the lithography is what's called the mask, which is what you put onto the surface, which you then write into, and then you actually create the pattern in the mask, and you write through the mask. And what we've discovered is a better way of writing masks. My colleague makes very large wheel-shaped molecules with lots of metal ions in them, and then some organic groups. And these organic groups are important because they make these wheels quite soluble. And that's important because you can then dissolve them in a solution and deposit them on a surface where you want to write out your electronic circuit. And once it's dried and you've taken the solvent away, you can then etch it, and it's the etching process that is key. So the patterns are generated by a beam of electrons by steering them point by point to a very small feature size that allows more and more transistors to be crammed in a smaller space that's never ever been done before. This technology allows us to make three-dimensional chips. Now the beauty of these structures are that they are shaped like fins, which allows the heat to dissipate away. The Pentium chip first came out in 1995. The amount of heat that was generated, you could cook an egg on the surface if you put a metal plate on the surface and turn the chip on. So as the temperature increases, it causes problems for the electrons transport to go from one place to another. 
we've used these metal molecules, we are able to arrange these in a ring-like structure. So because there's a large hole, what happens is the density goes down, so that means there's less to scatter on and you'll have a smaller feature size. We're not just trying to push the limits of what we can do with electron beam lithography, we're also pushing the lim limits of what we can do to resolve these features using scanning electron microscopes. The features that we're trying to create are as small as four or five nanometers, and that's also about the smallest three-dimensional object that we can resolve with our present microscopes. Now, moving to the future, what interests me about this project is that we've just installed the new helium IMB microscope in the KNI. With the helium IMB, we scan helium over the material, not just electrons, and the advantage is that helium can be formed into a smaller beam size, about a half a nanometer, which is several times smaller than the, than the electron beam. This will allow us to not only image features with better resolution than we can do presently, but it might also allow us to create features even smaller. There's certain limitations with existing technologies that you might have to etch several times to get the result that you want. The really neat thing about the systems that my colleagues have been working with is that often they can do the etching in one go and they can get nano architectures that no other process seems to be able to make. The end consumer will have better devices, they'll work faster because they're actually smaller so that means the electron will travel at a shorter distance, um, there will be a lot more functionality because you can fit a lot more devices in a smaller area and the price will remain the same or it will be cheaper. Manchester is a great place to meet people. We have no barriers to working across the scientific boundaries. So my colleague Scott, he's a physicist, I'm a chemist. I bump into him because we have an open working environment. Manchester allows us to, you know, physicists to meet chemists and that's how you do the best science. Thank you.